Microsoft Build has been going on this week and there were a ton of new Power Platform feature announcements. So I took the time to digest all of these new features so I can do this recap video for you. Now let's start with the bell of the ball lately in Power Platform land and that is Copilot Studio. In this video, I'm only going to be covering the Power Platform related announcements with Copilot Studio, Power Apps, and Power Automate. But if you want to know everything that was released at Build, you can reference the book of news here and I'll put a link to this in the description. Copilot Studio, though, really shined at Build. It was referenced by Satya in the keynote with some new functionality. Omar had a session. There are great sessions with Kendra and Gary Preddy from the product team as well. No shortage of Copilot Studio related content at Build. And there were a ton of new features and capabilities announced for Microsoft Copilot Studio. A lot of those summarized here in this blog post. The first one that you'll probably notice if you go to Copilot Studio today, Copilot Studio got a complete UX refresh. So if you go there today, this is what you'll see. Now Copilot Studio got the Copilot treatment itself. So if you've been using Copilot and Power Apps and Power Automate, you're used to seeing this text box on the homepage of those products where you can type in a natural language prompt and it builds your automation or your app for you. Well, with this new UX refresh, Copilot Studio has got this same Copilot treatment. So right here on the homepage, we can put in a natural language query and have it build a Copilot for us. So I could put something in here like, I want a Copilot to help onboard my new employees. I want it to answer questions about our company policies and procedures and anything else relevant that a new employee would need to know. Now, if I press enter here, Copilot's gonna go to work building a custom Copilot for us based off of that prompt. Once I put in my prompt there, it's gonna ask me for some follow-up information that it needs to continue configuring this Copilot. So it's asking me for some more detailed instructions for the Copilot, like do I want it to reply in a specific tone? So I can say something like, yes, reply in a friendly and professional manner, but speak like a pirate. And you see it's already recognizing the pirate theme here in its response, which is pretty cool. And now it's asking me where should the Copilot find this information? So I can actually directly put in some URLs to where this information is stored here in this chat. So some of this information might be here on my HR SharePoint site. So I can just copy this URL, go back to my Copilot chat experience here and say that, the info is all here on our SharePoint site. So let's recognize that site. Now it's asking if there's any particular topics or tasks that we want this Copilot to be able to do. So here I might say something like, I want the Copilot to be able to assist in ordering a new device and company swag for the new employee. Now at this point, I think we're good to go. So we can say I'm done here. And now if we're good with this, we can click create and that will go and create and configure this Copilot for us. And then along with this UX refresh, of course, this page where we actually configure our Copilots got a refresh as well. So the testing pane is over here on the right hand side now, if you want to test out your Copilot. And we have this knowledge section now, which used to be the generative AI section where we define all of those different knowledge sources that our Copilot has access to and topics and action and publishing. And if we go back to the homepage here, another new thing that they released is templates. So in addition to the Copilot capability to be able to build a Copilot with natural language, we have some templates to help us get started more quickly. So these are for a variety of scenarios like store operations, traveling, website Q&A and things like that. So you can simply select on one of these like this website Q&A. And it has some predefined instructions for the Copilot here to maintain a professional and polite tone and assist with questions to meet the user's needs. And it even puts a link here to the Microsoft website so you can start using it right away just to see what it does and how it works. So if I were to create this based off this template, we can do some testing and see what it would look like to have a website Q&A Copilot. So I can ask it, what is the latest Surface device? And you see it's pulling that information from the website. Another thing announced to build with Copilot Studio is Copilot connectors. These let you add and manage your public and enterprise data sources, whether that be SharePoint and OneDrive, like we just looked at, files in Dataverse, including Dynamics data, and other data from Fabric and the Microsoft Graph. So these are accessible in Copilot Studio on this library tab. And we can click on the connector button and see all the connectors I currently have right here. And we can add new ones by clicking Add and adding connectors through Copilot for Microsoft 365 or Copilot for Sales. So if I click connector here, we'll see all the different ones that we have access to, like Outlook, Office 365 users, OneDrive, and all of these other Power Platform connectors. And then the other really big thing with Copilot Studio is this capability called Agents. 
And unfortunately, this isn't released publicly yet, so I can't show you a demo, but it's cool new functionality that lets you take the Copilot and add in orchestration capabilities so that I can go and perform different tasks for you. And trust me, as soon as I can get my hands on this, I'm gonna do a video about it and show you exactly how it works. And just a couple more things that I noticed that really weren't highlighted in this blog post that were talked about in some of the build sessions with Copilot Studio is a new capability that is coming, not available yet, but they announced that it is coming to support multimodality with image support and image support in your chat experience. So this is thanks to some of the new GPT models that are out there that support this. And eventually Copilot Studio will support this as well. And this is adding a ton of power to what we can do with Copilot Studio. So imagine you're shopping at the store and you take a picture of a pair of shoes that you want and you send that to the Copilot and you wanna ask it to find the best deal. Well, with this new functionality that will come out eventually is it'll be able to recognize the image that you upload and go and perform those tasks. So then imagine taking that a step forward for a real business case that you're in a meeting and you build a custom co-pilot that can go and tell exactly what you're sharing on your screen. It can recognize dashboards, reports, graphs, spreadsheets, images, and get all the context and information and answer questions about that. So tons of implications for this and use cases. I'm excited to see this be really least eventually. So as you can see, lots to cover for Copilot Studio alone, and it was definitely the belt of the ball, but that is not to overshadow some of the cool new features that were announced for Power Apps and Power Automate. And with Power Automate, probably the biggest announcement I build with that is the introduction of LLM flows. And these LLM flows are a completely new way to design workflows. So the cloud flows that we build traditionally are based off of Azure Logic Apps, but these LLM flows switch that and use a large language model instead to do these automations. So they have this little sizzle video here that shows you a little bit of what you can do with these LLM flows. This is something that isn't widely accessible, so I can't show you a demo of this either, but this video shows you a little bit of how it's done. You just put in your natural language prompt, kind of like we do already with Copilot and Power Automate, but the user experience for this is totally different. You define some variables and inputs and outputs and some instructions, and it pretty much goes to work and builds out a thought process with AI. And AI handles everything. It handles the conditions, the actions, the loops, anything that it needs to handle that process. And important to note, we're not losing our traditional cloud flows and the ability to build those with Copilot and all that. Those will still be there. We can still build that way and there's still a place for those. But these LLM flows are really a way to allow you to get more value quickly out of your automations by letting AI do a lot of the work and you just describing what you need and changing the paradigm a bit. So it'll be interesting to see how these evolve and what exactly you can and can't do with these. So again, as I'm able to get my hands on these new LLM flows, I'll dive into it, get all the details and let you know how it works and all that as soon as I can. Another really cool feature announced was on the Power Automate desktop side. So this is actually using a recorder and Copilot functionality to be able to let you record your process and talk through it like you were explaining it to someone. And it can actually go and then build the RPA automation for you based off of that. So you don't have to go and manually define things or anything like that. You just start the recorder, perform your task, explain what you're doing as it's happening and why you're doing it, and it builds the automation. So this is really cool. Again, I don't have access to this at the moment, but I'll make some content as soon as I do. It'll be really cool to see how this evolves as well. I think it'll make RPA and desktop automation even easier for everyone out there. So I'm looking forward to it. Now, another new thing that I can actually show is the Automation Center. So this is out there in preview and it just gives you a good holistic view right here inside of Power Automate of all of the automations that you have. You can see your error rate for your flows, your average runs per day. You can see trends of errors, your top triggers used and a ton of different information. And one of the things I love is of course we have Copilot in this automation center so we can ask it questions. So we can ask it things like on average, how long did it take flow runs to complete? And it can go in and get that information for me. So nine seconds, that's not that bad. And of course I can ask it things myself like who has the most number of flows. There you go, it responds with a nice table that shows the number of flows and who has the most. So just some really cool new functionality. I love seeing these new admin capabilities pop up in the experience so that we can better manage and maintain our flows. And then two more things that were announced as well is the troubleshooting cloud flows with Copilot. So this is using Copilot to give you some hopefully more helpful insights on what errors you have and how to resolve them. I'm trying to get this lit up in my environment so I can show this to you all. It's not there yet. Hopefully it will be soon. 
And the other one is this enhanced experience for authoring. So when we put in a prompt, generally with Copilot and Power Automate, we had to be very specific, like use this connector, use these specific actions and calling them out by name. Now we can put in a more vague prompt, kind of like we saw with Copilot Studio, where it'll say something like, I want to automate my time approval process. And it can go and have a natural conversation with you to extract out the information that it needs to get to the automation. So that's another new feature and that's called conversation first cloud flows. So finally wrapping this all up, let's talk power apps. So some of the things announced here on the power app side have already been out there and I made some videos on the one that they really highlighted is the ability to use copilot to be able to write and understand power effects. You know, I love that. I have a link to a video up here if you want to watch my full length video on how that works, but essentially we can use the two forward slashes like we would normally use to make a comment inside of the formula bar. And that will go and use copilot to suggest a power effects function to solve that need. And that same functionality can be used to explain what's going on in a power effect formula as well. Another one that I'm really excited about is they're really evolving the experience of integrating Copilot Studio in your Power Apps. So this is giving us a way to more natively integrate with the Copilot and Copilot Studio in our Power App. So imagine when you're out there on the field, you might not want to have to type and fumble around with an app. You might want to just ask some simple questions with voice. We can do that with Copilot Studio in this native integration and that was a scenario that they showed in one of the sessions there at Build. Another one that they announced is co-authoring. This has been out there for a little bit in some private previews and things, but it is finally becoming a reality so that we can collaborate and work on Power Apps solutions as a team. And this is something that we've been needing for a while to truly work on Power Apps as a team. So I'm excited to see that there. I think the Power Apps functionality that really got me excited though is this right here. And this is the YAML integration. So you might recall, I've had some videos in the past where we've had the ability to export and unpack our Power Apps Canvas apps, where we could see the code behind, which is essentially YAML. Well, now it's taking that and making it more user-friendly by allowing us to view the YAML directly in the Canvas app. So we can actually copy that YAML from the app and we can paste it into our text editor of choice, make any changes and paste it back into our Power App. So for all my code first devs out there that love editing and code editors and all that and want to be able to just get to the code behind and make changes and everything, this is a huge win. The other thing that I'm going to be on the lookout for this that I think is really interesting is it can make it much easier for us to share components in different screens and configurations in our Power Apps. So I contribute a lot to the Power Platform samples library and I do a lot of Power App samples. Right now we have to package those all up as solutions and import it and sometimes there can be issues with that. We might have restrictions where we can't upload solutions or we might not want the entire solution. We just are installing it because we want this one particular component in the solution. So with this new YAML functionality, I could essentially say copy the YAML just for this little reviewers widget right here. And I could save that into the Power Platform Samples repo as a YAML snippet. You just copy that and paste that into your app. To me, that's a really easy and accessible way to be able to share individualized components and pieces of code, quote unquote, in Power Apps. So that's something that I personally am going to be experimenting with as this gets more widely rolled out. So those were the biggest announcements that I knew about from the Power Apps, Power Automate, and Copilot Studio side. Of course, there is so much more to dive into. So if you want to learn more, again, go to this book of news here. It has links to the relevant sessions that you can go and watch on demand if you want to see some of these things in action. And of course, I'm going to be doing some deep dive videos on all of this functionality as soon as I get access. I can't wait to show you. It's exciting times to be in the Power Platform space with all of these amazing innovations. I hope you found this recap helpful. Go out and try the features that are available right now and check out some of these sessions on demand when you have time. There's some really good information there. If you found this video helpful, do me a favor and click that subscribe button and I will see you.